All right, welcome back. So we're going to keep talking about finding the volumes of solids of revolution, and we're still using the disk method, this time just around the y-axis. So this is going to look very similar to doing it around the x-axis. Um, in the x-axis, we did dx, so you can imagine here, this is probably going to be dy. And if you had any difficulty sort of understanding where the formula came from for when we were doing it around the x-axis, maybe seeing it again will help you solidify that. So I'm going to draw us a shape here. This one's going to look um, something that we would use for doing the y-axis revolution. So I'm going to draw us a function. I'm going to make it look kind of funky just to give us a different type of shape to think about. So let's say this is a function of y. So I'm writing x equals f of y. It obviously doesn't have to be this way. It might be like f of x with is equal to y. But when we do these, we eventually are going to need to have it to be x equals. So that's just how I'm writing it right now to help us out in the future, since I've prepared this to hopefully be helpful to us. So we're going to start with this function, and we're going to look at it on the interval from a to b. And we're taking this first, this little space here, and we're revolving it around the y-axis. And this is going to create a new solid for us, a new shape once we do this, and we're going to find the volume of this shape. So to help you envision what's happening with this little area sort of swiping around the y-axis, I'm going to draw some oh, an oval here, hopefully, to represent the um, shape that it's making. And we'll have this um, sort of mirrored on the other side. Okay, not too bad. So it's sort of swiping out this area that is making us this interesting little funnel cup-shaped item. So our task is going to be to take this shape and add up a bunch of disks for it. So let's, let me draw it kind of bigger here, or separate it at least. Okay, so we're gonna take little disks inside of this shape. Okay, well, here you go, I'll just draw it in. So we're gonna take these little um, disks and add them up, starting at the bottom and then going up to the top. So we are adding up the volume of these disks. So we have talked about how to find volume before, but let's talk about it again just to make sure we're feeling good. So I've drawn something here already to prepare just so I don't have to have fight with the shapes. So we have these little disks like I've drawn here and we're adding up the volume. So these have a radius and that radius is just our function. So let me talk about why. So on our graph, the radius, the distance from the center to the edge of the disk is just from the y-axis to the function we're looking at. And so we just take the function itself and that becomes our radius. Then each of these little disks has a width and this time the width is a dy. You can imagine that we're adding up all of these disks and so each one sort of has this little width here and it has a dy width that we're adding. So when we go to find the volume of the disk, we do pi times the radius squared, that's the area of the circle, and then we multiply by the width to get that sort of depth to the disk and have it be a volume rather than just an area. So for us, the radius is our function, f of y. That's just to let us know that there needs to be y's there in the variable. And then we have times dy, which is our width. So the formula for how we find the volume is that we're going to add all of these up with an integral. That's the power of having an integral. So we're taking these infinitely small little disks and adding them all up together. So we do the interval from a to b of pi times we have our function that's our radius squared and then dy is our width so this is our formula we're going to use for revolving around the y-axis it looks just like the one for x except everything is a y instead of an x here and this is our formula for the disk method of a volume 
of a solid of revolution by revolving around the y-axis. Okay, so there we go. This is our disk method with y-axis. So I want to try this on an example just to show you what it looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. I've drawn a little cylinder here that's going to come in handy in a moment, so I'll just move that out of the way for now. So for this example, let's find the volume of a solid. So we're looking at the region between x equals the square root of y and y equals 9, and we'll revolve it around the y-axis. So this time I didn't prepare this for us, so we're going to need to graph it, but it isn't too bad. You could use a graphing tool like Desmos if you wanted, or I've graphed this already ahead of time, so I'm feeling pretty confident about what the shape looks like. So we have our x and our y axes. And then I'm just thinking of different values for y to plug in to this x equals square root of y. So if I plug 1 in for y, I'm getting 1 on the x. If I plug 4 in for y, I'm getting 2 on the x. And if I plug 9 in for y, I'm getting 3 on the x. So this is a parabola looking shape, but it's just the positive side of it. So we have 1, oops, and I didn't draw it perfectly, but... So 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Okay, good enough. And actually, I'm just going to keep the original one I had. <laughs> okay, and so this is the graph x equals square root of y. Then we're doing this from this point up to y equals 9, so that's just the horizontal line at 9. So we're taking this area in here and we're revolving it around the y-axis. And so when I'm doing these, I like to just draw in my little rectangles to represent the disks that I'm finding the volumes of to add up. And so if we think about this rectangle here to represent that disk, it's going to have some width and that width is dy and the radius of it is just the distance from the axis out, and so that's specifically just the square root of y. That tells us the distance there. So I want to just show this on the disk again, just to really make it clear how this is coming together. So what's happening is that we are taking this little rectangular shape and we're revolving it around, and so it's kind of swiping out this distance as it goes. So if you imagine this little rectangle kind of going backward here, Okay, so this would be my R. Then it's swiping around, and so at some point it comes up here to the front. There we go. So we have this little piece, and it's moving around the y-axis to create these little disks. And they have this radius and a height of dy, or a width of dy, you could say. Then it might just be good to notice that our shape we're making is kind of like a cup. So it like is going to swipe around the y-axis and look something like this. And inside we have a bunch of these little disks that I've blown up here. And we're adding those all up. Okay, so that's our solid of revolution. We have these things we're adding. And so we now have all the information we need to put into the formula that we're going to use. So first I need my integral and the bounds. I'm looking at rectangles from zero up to nine. So I'm starting at y equals zero and going up to nine. Then I do pi times the radius squared. My radius is just that function, so it's square root of y. Then I multiply by the width, or we just have that dy here to represent it. Okay, and now I just need to compute this integral, and this will give me the volume of the solid of revolution. Okay, let's try that. So I'm doing the integral from zero to nine of pi times. So now the square root and the squared are going to cancel, and I'm just left with y. 
leaving us with a pretty straightforward integral. I just realized I wrote that wrong. There we go, zero to nine. So when I do the antiderivative, I add one to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. So I have pi times one half y squared. Now I just need to substitute in my bounds. So I substitute in nine first, then I subtract off what happens when I substitute in zero. That zero term is going to go away. So I'm left with pi times 81 over two with this minus zero, since that's a zero. And so my answer is 81 over two pi, which is approximately 127.33. And that is the solution to my volume. Okay, so just to summarize all of this before we finish up, we now have the disk method for both revolving around the x and the y axis. So I just wanna write that out for you as sort of a summary. So our formula in general, we look at, we start with whatever the variable is to the end point. So we have the bounds. Then we do pi times the radius squared. And then we do times the width, which is d whatever. So that square represents the variable that we have. So it could be dx or dy. And our radius is just whatever the function is. So we would do as x equals if we had dy, so we'd want y's as the variables, or we'd have y equals for dx, where x is the variable. So this is similar to how we were doing areas between curves. And the important thing to note here is that revolving around the y-axis is dy, and then revolving around the x-axis is dx. And you use this method anytime the little slices that you're using are disks. So if you're revolving around an axis and the slices of the new solid are disks, then you use this method to help you. But there also um, another option we can use. You can also use shell methods sometimes, and we'll talk about that later. But this is the method you can use anytime you have disks that you are adding up. All right, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one. Thank you.